Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of all Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, friends, let's just comment on that for a moment. You know, this, this says the Holy Bible. Now, we know from many of our studies in this ministry that holy means separated. And Bible is a compilation of books. So this is a separated compilation of books, meaning that there is no book like it on planet Earth. It's written from an outside dimension, holding truths and nuggets of wisdom that man cannot understand or even obtain upon his own. These are heavenly words, spiritual words, given by a heavenly God, spiritual God, unto depraved mankind that only through the illumination of the Holy Spirit we can even begin to understand. And yet it is this book that we pattern our lives after, that we conform our lives to. And by doing so, we begin to walk in the light, experiencing all the peace, the joy, the comfort, the warmth that the light brings to us. Left outside of that, we're walking in darkness, in cold and dark places. And so let us be thankful today for the Word of God. Because I don't know if you're aware or not, but this book was kept from the common man for thousands of years. It was only about 450, 500 years ago that this was made available to us. Men burned at the stake for getting the Word of God into printing presses and distributing it to common man. And the religious world, the religious church, more specifically the Catholic Church, did everything in its power to keep it out of the hands of the common man, the farmer, the miner, the lumberjack, those who did the most basic of work and were looked down on by so many. So let us be grateful today for the Word of God, the gift and the availability that we have to open it anytime we want and read it. Because there are people, even in the day and age in which we live, that would give their right arms and their right legs just to have a copy of the Word of God. And yet you and I have how many copies in our homes, and yet how little time do we give unto them? Oh, friends, read your Bible, study your Bible, and allow it to change your life and conform you into the man or woman of God that he has created you to be. Now, we're continuing to look into the life of Job through the book of Job, and today we are in chapter 18. Now, Bildad, the Shuite, is going to respond to what Job has just said. Job finds himself holding on to the last little bit of hope that he has, and I want you to hear the pain in this man Job as he sits with these friends. In chapter 19, verse 21, he says, Have pity upon me, have pity upon me, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you persecute me as God and are not satisfied with my flesh? Have pity upon me. Stop the pretense of religion. If you don't know, simply say that you don't know. And that's where we find ourselves with Bildad today because Bildad comes even stronger with this pretense of religiosity, seeking to show his knowledge, speak forth some spiritual heavenly truth, and yet most of what he says is absolutely wrong. And we know this by the simple observation of our eyes. We can look around the world that we live in and we can see that the wicked are not punished the way that God would punish them if he was still working as he did back in the days of Moses. The biblical writers throughout time, even Job himself and some of his friends here, have asked the question, why is it that the wicked prosper? And yet the righteous are so heavily tormented. But that's not what Bildad says here. Bildad goes into this long speech of trying to explain to Job how it is that the, that the wicked, the sinful, are tormented and robbed of everything good in this life. And by doing this, he's trying to turn that illustration upon Job. He's trying to show Job, 
look, if you meet what I'm saying here, if you meet these qualifications, then you're left to walk away with nothing more than the fact that you are a sinful man and that's why God is punishing you. And so let's look at his argument. He begins in, in verse two and he says, how long will it be aired that you make an end of words? Mark, and afterwards we will speak. In other words, why are you trying to silence us? Give heed to what we're saying. Listen to what we're saying because we're telling you the truth. He says, wherefore are we counted as beast and reputed vile in your sight? Job, you're looking upon us with indignation. You're not even considering the words that we're saying. He says in verse four, because you do this, God, the almighty teareth himself in his anger. Shall the earth be forsaken for thee? And shall the rock be removed out of his place? Yea, the light of the wicked will be put out. Now, again, he's trying to apply these principles to the state that Job is in right now. So he says, the light of the wicked should be put out. If your light has been put out, Job, if you've lost all hope, it's because you're wicked. The spark of his fire shall not shine. Now, as we look at these, flip these in your mind, because the opposite of this is true for the righteous. In other words, the light of the righteous shall shine brightly, whereas the light of the wicked shall be put out. The spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle and his candle shall be put out with him. But we as the people of God, when we walk through this world, we shine brightly because of the love of Jesus that is instilled within us. It says in verse seven, the steps of the wicked strength shall be straightened and his own counsel shall cast him down. His own words shall persecute him and even prosecute him. For he is cast into a net by his own feet and he walks upon a snare. But the righteous walk in liberty. The Lord God Almighty guides their steps and they can walk free of knowing that there is no snare about their feet, but they walk in places of liberty and victory, hallelujah. Look at verse nine. The gin shall take him by the heel and the robbers shall prevail against him. But the Bible tells us that the righteous, God has placed his angels and given them charge over thee to protect them in any and all circumstances. The snare is laid for the wicked in the ground and a trap for him in the way. Terrors will make him afraid on every side that shall drive him to his feet. But the righteous shall fear no man. The righteous shall only fear the Lord God Almighty. It says in verse 12, the wicked strength shall be hunger bitten and destruction shall be ready at his side. But Jesus said, I came that they would have life and have life more abundantly. Verse 13, it shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. But the confidence of the righteous is upon the God that they serve in the God whom they serve. And neither death nor life, angel or principality, anything in heaven or anything on earth shall separate them from the love or the confidence of their God. Verse 15, it shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitations. His roots shall be dried up beneath and above shall his branch be cut off. But our roots, friends, are deeply grounded in the God whom we serve, in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the word, the living word of God. And we don't dry up, but we bear fruit, manifesting the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ through our lives unto a dark and dying world. It says in verse 15, his remembrance, the remembrance of the wicked shall perish from the earth and he shall have no name in the street. But the Bible says of the righteous, our names have been written in the book of life and we shall be remembered forevermore. Hallelujah. Verse 18, the wicked shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He will neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. But the Bible tells us as the righteous, we have many sons, many daughters, many brothers, many sisters, because Jesus said, those that do the will of the father, they are my brothers and sisters. And so we are a part of a large family scattered throughout the earth, 
many brothers and sisters and sons and daughters from many races, many colors, many cultures, many peoples. He says in verse 20, they that come after him, they that come after this wicked person will be astonished at his day as they that went before were affrighted. Surely such are the dwellings of the wicked. And this is the place of him that knoweth not God. Now, you know what's sad about this dissertation by Bildad is in most Bible colleges, this would be widely celebrated as a great dissertation on behalf of who God is and how he works among men. And yet very little of it is true. There is coming a day for the unrighteous where they will be judged accordingly. But as they live upon this earth, it seems that they get all their heart's desires. And that's why Job has such a problem with the things that are being said to him, because as they would appear to be words of truth on the surface, they hold no substance. They're empty. And yet Job's pleas for silence go unheard, go unmet. It's almost as if these men are speaking to hear themselves speak, congratulating themselves for great words of wisdom. And yet as Job repeatedly says, there is no truth in them. And so what can we take away from today's lesson? It would be simply this, friends. Sometimes the best thing to say, maybe oftentimes the best thing to say is simply, I don't know. I don't have an answer. All I can tell you is once I was blind, now I see. I can't explain it. I can't put tangible hands upon it, but I know what God has done for me. And what he has done for me, he can and will do for you if you will only surrender and patiently wait for his hand to work in your life. Well, we're going to close there today, friends. I'm so glad again that you're here with us. I'm glad that you're allowing, that you're hungry for the word of God in your life. And I pray that it's conforming you into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we serve. Now, as he wills and until tomorrow, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.